Hello, my name is Richmond and welcome to my channel. My priority is to help you digitize and digitize well in Embed. Let's get started. Today we will learn on how to edit our workspace or background. So to edit your workspace or background, you have to click on your hoop. And in this section, we will learn how to edit our hoop. So the first thing that we will tackle is our hoop color or your background, how to change your background color. So you change your background color, you click inside the square, left click, and you can choose any color that you want to change the background of your color depending on the fabric that you will be stitching it on. So let's say I'll choose yellow for this tutorial. So you click on OK and I'll click on apply for you to see the effect. Mm -hmm. So we'll move to the next settings. That is your hoop size. You are two ways in changing the hoop size. That is, you can either left click You can either right click to reduce your size or left click to increase the size of the width of your, of your hoop. The same thing as for the height of your hoop. Or the second way or the second, the second method. The other way is to click on the width. Left click on the width. Then you can choose the prescribed sizes here or you can Click your left click and enter your own value there. Then you click on you click on this and you click on apply. So let's say I'll choose 200. I click on apply. And the size of your hoop, the width of your hoop is increased. And for the hoop size, it doesn't really matter or makes a difference when you will be importing images onto your workspace or you'll be importing images to edit on or to digitize on. And I will show you why in a video I will title Importing Images to Your Workspace. <clears throat> you can also choose ready-made hoops. So to choose the ready-made hoops, you can click on this. You have the ready-made hoops here. And you can choose whatever hoop that you want. Okay, so I will choose the Brother Dream Machine. Okay, and click on Apply to see the effect. Then move to the last part under the hoop section. Hoops comes in two different shapes. Sometimes it's rectangle, others are round. So if your hoop is round, you can tick this box and you click on apply and it will create this oval shape depending on the size of your hoop. Now we'll move to a different section. That is a save. For the save, we have only two options here. Auto save and backup files. When you Click on the auto save, or when you click on the box, it will take the auto save. And this auto save, what it simply means is it saves your design every five minutes. And the backup files is just create a bunch of files, it's not that important. So, to make it take effect, you click on apply for it to take effect. So, our next session is the grid uh, editing our grid lines now the first section that or the first option that you will tackle is the grid <laughs> the grid is the size of each boxes on your workspace so let's say uh, you want to increase your size to maybe two millimeters depending on what how whatever you desire whatever size that you want you can just click on it then you change the size of your grid boxes and these sizes here these quotation marks up there indicates that these sizes are in inches 
So the, for the sake of this tutorial, you will click, we will choose two inches for us to see the effect very well. So we'll click on the one, we will choose one inch rather, sorry. So we'll click on the one inch and click on apply. And you see the sizes of each grid box has changed to one inch. So we will use our measuring tool to see if it's really one inch. There is it, nearly one inch, but it's not very clear. I just want to demonstrate it to you. That's it. And we will move to the subdivisions. The subdivision grids are the smaller boxes only visible when you zoom, when your zoom factor is or above seven fifty percent. So let's we just maintain it like one I click on apply so to see the grid subdivision grid lines you zoom in 750 here see these small boxes they are one millimeter each one of them is one liter by one millimeter yeah that are your subdivisions subdivision grids grid colors is the color of your grid lines so because we have uh, the, uh, the ash color we don't we don't really see it well so let's choose black we click inside just as we did in the hoop in the hoop section you click inside the square then you choose the color that you want you click on ok click on apply see there is a grid color now the grid the grid lines has changed to black from ash to black or from gray to black and the last section that we will tackle is additional grid the additional grid add additional grid lines to the existing grid so let's say i, I normally don't use it it's not really that important but just for the sake of this tutorial i will demonstrate it for you to see so you'll click on the none to choose if you want to add additional grid without readout or diagonals click on it and click on apply to see the effect there's it and the diagonals too has a different effect there's diagonals too so the next section is edit mode Now, the show parameters displays parameters when you are in edit mode during digitizing. I will give more info on how or what the parameter is when we start digitizing. So, I'll just brief you on what the show parameters means. So, let's say you have the show parameters ticked. ticked and I will quickly draw a filling on our surface to show you what the show parameters means. So when you go to edit mode, you can edit it. You can edit when during doing edits or editing your design. You can see this section here. That is the parameters, the settings for your objects on your workspace. So if you take the show parameters, you will see these things here. But if you untick the box, the show parameters, if you untick the show parameters box and you go to your edit mode, you won't see the parameters here. Normally I keep it off when I'm digitizing. When I want to edit it or I want to change the parameters, I will just go right click on it and go to parameters and add it the settings so next section is the max contracts 
The mass contrast makes the edges and the segments and stands out depending on the background. So let's say you have the mass contrast on. When you go to edit mode, you could see you can really tell the edges. You can really tell the edges. See, you can see the edges very clear and it really stands out on your workspace. That's it. When you untick the mask contrast, the edges and the end segments will change the colors that you prefer in these boxes. So I untick it and I click on apply. Let me change the background color to white so that you see the colors very well. See, it has changed to the color that the color there in your edges and the segment ends. So, disabling the mask contrast means you manually assign colors to the edges and the segment ends using the color box. Uh, I would just recommend that you always keep the mask contrast always enabled. Now, the next section to talk about is the guidelines. <clears throat> so, let's quickly create a guideline here. So, I will make video on how to use guidelines to split designs or objects. In that video, I will teach more on using or creating guidelines. So, by, for, this, for the sake of this tutorial, I will quickly create a guideline for us to see how the settings work. I'll create a, a horizontal guideline. I'll have it kind of horizontal guideline. Let me change the grid lines too. It will be very visible for us. So I change to red. Now these are the guidelines. Now the normal means the guideline, the color of the unselected guideline. Let's change it to blue to increase the contrast between the background and the grid lines. See, so if it's not selected, it's in blue color. But if it's selected, let me choose another color lemon green for the selected is lemon green so when you select it it therefore changes to lemon green so that is it that's all for the guidelines now the last part of our tutorial is a 3d preview <coughs> No, the last but one is a 3D preview. Now, the 3D, the 3D preview is the background texture when you switch the view to 3D. So, you, to change the background or the background texture, you click inside this box and choose any background color that you want, background texture you want, depending on the fabric. Click on OK. When you click on Apply, so when I generate this fill stitch, when I go to 3D, pre, 3D, let me change the background color to a different color so that we, we could see the texture very well. Choose red. Okay. So that's it. That is the background. You could see the texture here as we choose over there. So choose over. 3D preview. Okay, let's choose this one. Click on OK. Click on Apply. See. Whatever. Let's see. So it all depends on the fabric that you are stitching your design onto. Now, the last part for this tutorial is a selection. 
So the selection is the outline of a selected object. So we have our background red. I'll choose yellow. So for us to see the outline very well, we can apply. So when you go to your normal mode, then you will see the outline is has turned has changed from red to yellow. And you can also see it in the vector form. The same thing. So that was how the selection also works. Hello, that's Richmond helping you digitize and embed. Subscribe to my channel for more future content like these. Thank you. Bye bye. See you next time.